Hey, DDCHJ here, and welcome to our bot start to finish. In this episode, we'll be setting up our Python environment so we can develop our bot, and I'll introduce you to the Gosling utilities. Hey everyone, welcome back to the series. We're jumping right in and going to python.org to grab the 3.7.6 release. And we'll scroll down to the bottom of the page where we can find the executable installer for Windows. Once that's downloaded, we'll go ahead and run it. The only installation settings we need to change is to ensure that add Python 3.7 to path is checked. We want to be able to use Python from the command prompt, so it's important that we do this step. After that, we just let the installer finish and Python is all ready to go. When Python installs, the first thing we'll want to do is make sure that its package manager, called pip, is updated. So we'll open up a Windows command prompt and type in python-m pip install dash dash upgrade pip. And that should make sure pip is up to date if it wasn't already. The next thing we'll do is type pip install rlbot to go grab the rlbot package and add it to our Python installation. This will allow our code editor to understand what is going on when we use specific RLBot tools. The next thing we're going to need is a code editor, and for this project we're going to be using PyCharm. All you have to do is go to their site, grab the free version, download, and run the installer. Once the installer finishes, you don't actually have to open it yet. Instead, we're going to go over to GitHub and grab the latest Gosling Utilities folder. As always, all of these links will be down in the description. Once the folder downloads, all you have to do is open it up and extract the file within. This will be the beginnings of your first bot. The first thing you want to do in this folder is go into the examplebot.cfg and change things to your own liking. In the video here, I also changed the file names and had to update those in the CFG to match as well. Once you've updated the config file, you can open up the GUI and add your bot to it by clicking the plus sign and loading the folder. Before we go any further, it's a good idea to test your bot. I put my bot on either team and started a match just to make sure it runs. Once it loads in, we can see it go for kickoff and then atba. Atba means always towards ball agent and it's commonly the first thing you'll ever do with an RL bot. Now that we know it works, we'll go check out the code. We'll go ahead and open up PyCharm. If it's the first time running it, you may have to go through and set up some defaults first, but once you get to the welcome screen, you can click open and then go find your folder that you downloaded. Again, it may take some time to open this folder the first time as PyCharm has a lot of things to set up, so just give it some time. Now the first thing I probably want to do inside of PyCharm is go to File, Settings, Editor, and Inspections. Then scroll down and find the pep aid stuff and disable it. This is because I'm really bad at programming to pep8 guidelines, so PyCharm flags almost all of my lines of code as non-compliant. With that embarrassment out of the way, we can go to the top left and click the drop down to see all the files in our folder. I'm going to go into hello world.py, which is what I called the main.py file, and we'll be able to see all the code that was used to run that kickoff plus appa. Now there's actually two examples in this file. One of them uses the raw utilities, that's the first example at the top. Underneath it is an example that uses only routines. I'll get to the differences in a bit, but let's run through these examples line by line. Starting with the first example, we're creating something called relative target, which is the difference between the ball's location and our own car's location. I'll get into this structure later on how you can find the locations and other properties of different objects within the game. Once we have this relative target, we're actually converting it into local coordinates. That's another topic I'll dive into at a later date, but that's done with a nice simple function, agent.me.local, passing it the relative target. Once we have this local target, we can pass it to the two main functions of the raw utilities. One is called default PD, which steers towards a local target, and the other is default throttle, which gets the car up to a certain speed. In this case, we're going up to 2300, which is the max speed the car can go. Other useful values like this can be found in the wiki. The second part of the example here does the exact same thing, but it's a little bit more complicated to explain. You see, the agent has a stack inside of it that lets us sequence certain events. In this case, there's a kickoff flag as well that we're checking. 
This kickoff flag tells us whether or not we're going for a kickoff. And if we are, there's a specific routine, i.e. a sequence of movements, that we're going to push to the stack to perform. If we're not in a kickoff, we push an app of routine which never actually ends. It basically just does the exact same thing as this. I'll be going into a lot more detail in later episodes on how all this works, but for now I'm going to have a little bit of fun before we close this episode. The first thing I'm going to do here is get rid of the second example because it's the more complicated one and I don't feel like playing with it right now. And then instead of targeting the ball, how about we target our opponent? We'll make that change and then go over to the GUI and start a new match and see the result. So our bots will... Yes. They are basically chasing each other in circles now because both are trying to drive towards the other. I was hoping for some rule one or any other interesting action, but it appears they've just decided to circle each other for indefinitely at this point. I think this is a good point to wrap up the episode. I don't want to make these too long. So I'll see you in the next one where we'll go into a lot more of these details.